Thank you. Hey, everybody out there. It's so nice to see you. I'm Jacqueline. I'm from Denmark, and I will be representing the Bachelor of Engineering in Biotechnology program uh, here in Kalumbo, Denmark. With me, I have Ines. Uh, Ines, would you shortly introduce yourself? I'm Ines, and I'll be talking about the International Honours Degree in Teaching offered in Vorimbo, also in Denmark. Yes. So uh, I will start with presenting my program, um, and then Ines will, uh, will join me afterwards. And you are very welcome to ask a lot of questions uh, uh, while we go on. And then at the end, I, we will go through the questions, and we will try to answer you the best we can. And uh, nice that I can see some of you is writing hello in the chat box. You should be more than welcome also to do that. Uh, so now I will just share my screen with my presentation. Um, so you have something to look at other than just my face while I'm, I'm talking. And here we go. Yeah. So uh, as I said, I will be talking about the Bachelor of Engineering in Biotechnology, uh, which you can study in a little, very, very small city in Denmark uh, called uh, Kalumbo. Um, and as you can see here, I have made this little red dot where you can find Kalumbo. I guess most of you sitting out there already know uh, Copenhagen. Uh, so I've also just drawn a map so you can get an idea of where we are. So between Copenhagen and Kalumbo, there's approximately one hour in car. So it's fairly close to each other. Uh, University College Absalon uh, is a bigger institution. We have eight campuses with 12 different education, where the two of the education is, are in English and is for you international students. So why did we choose to locate this education in Kalumbo? And it was actually not Absalon's idea to begin with. It was the big biotech industry that is placed in Kalumbo. And when I say big, I mean like world's biggest biotech industries placed in Kalumbo. And at least in Denmark, and I guess also where you're from, there is a extreme demand of qualified, educated engineers. Uh, I know last year in Denmark, we estimated that we missed 15,000 uh, educated engineers. And among those are the engineers in Kalumbo, and we really miss them. So the industry asks, couldn't there come an education in, in Kalumbo next to the companies? And a lot of the big universities in Denmark were offered this uh, position. And they said, no, thank you. And then Absalon was offered, and they they was just like, let's do it. Uh, this is a great idea. Uh, so we work in close cooperation with the industry in Kalumbo because we want to make sure that when you are educated at us after three and a half years, it's the year expand of the education, you can go directly out and work in Danish and international biotech companies. So we call Kalumbo the biotech city, and we do that because some of the world's largest biotech companies are here. Maybe you already know some of them. As you can see uh, down in the purple area, we have Novo Science and Novo Nordisk. Novo Nordisk, uh, they produce insulin, and the production site in Kalumbo is actually the world's biggest insulin production site. And 50% of all world's insulin is produced in Kalumbo. Novozymes, they produce enzymes, and also in Kalumbo, not to show off, but maybe a little bit, <laughs> uh, you also find the world's biggest enzyme production site. Despite these world's biggest industries, we also have a lot of specialized biotech industries. Um, we have, for example, Equinoa. It's a uh, Norwegian company that is a refinery, so they refine oil. Uh, we have a uh, Kalumbo municipal uh, utility, uh, and they work with treating the wastewater with ozone uh, because ozone have shown to can remove pharmaceuticals in the wastewater, and so forth and so forth. And all these companies, they are on their tips uh, to just want to hire you when you're done with the education in Kalumbo. So uh, there's this, there's great opportunities. Um, 
also without we also um, I could say that three of the three and a half years is like when you're in school and we have a half year of uh, internship at this program and this internship is one of in one of these companies uh, and others that are shown here on the slide um, we also have student jobs in the biggest co companies so even though you only are first semester students it's able to get a study relevant job uh, and that is not very normally elsewhere uh, but that is how much they really want you here in Colombo. Uh, beside all the industries we are also the first who ever had to do an industrial symbiosis uh, it's known as Colombo symbiosis um, and it's yeah, it's world famous. It just won the sustainability prize. And the whole concept with the symbiosis in Canada is like one company's waste can be to a resource in another company. So instead of one company have to pay somebody to take their waste, they can just like forward it to each other in this pipe system you can see on the picture. Uh, this means that every year, uh, Canada as a city reduces the CO2 emission extremely much and big cities around the world for example in china try to uh, copy paste the colombo symbiosis idea so um, this is really world famous so yeah bachelor of engineering in biotechnology i just want to tell you a little bit more about the program in general so what is the thing about engineers uh, i meet a lot of young people that want to become engineers uh, and then I ask them like what is an engineer and, and at least in Denmark we say it's a, somebody who solves technical problems so you have to enjoy being in different kind of tasks and environments where you don't necessarily know the answer but you have you want to look into to finding the answer with your with your um, colleagues. Another thing which also is stated here is you have to be good with math or at least you need to, to like math and want to look into math. If you hate math, uh, don't become an engineer. <laughs> it's probably the main good reasons not to become an engineer, but if you like it, then it, this is the way for you. Uh, so biotechnology has like four main topics we also touch upon during the education. Uh, most of people coming here they want to work within pharmaceutical science and also a lot of what we do have a main focus on pharmaceutical science but we also work within the field of food technology uh, fermentation processes for example like uh, production of cheese production of meat uh, we look into wastewater treatment because it's very important and at least it is uh, environmental chemistry uh, which also have a big focus today in the world in general so this is like the the things we focus on during the education and what you will be taught then i brought this overview or the structure of the education to give you an idea of like which courses you will have and you can see it's like chemistry it's math and it's biology most of it it's all the white courses you you will have it's um those you need to have then we have the electives uh, in the electives you can for example choose extra math you can also if you know you want to become a project leader you can take take electives in within that field of management then we have the internship of the sixth semester and then the bachelor project so what is very unique about our education is that you have to have another lot of ba uh, basic knowledge but we also have a lot of project-based work this is the four project you see and in the white courses you will meet the industry but in the project it's direct um, work with companies and not to show off but a little bit again to show off this is just a picture of all the big companies we, we collaborate with and of course you maybe don't know it but when you start here you will start to know the businesses uh, the main focus we have is of course that you need to know what it says in the textbook but we want to make you the perfect engineer and the perfect engineer also know how to make a budget how to make a risk analysis how to work in teams how to solve problems that cannot be looked up in a book and by project by project by project uh, we also try to give you more of these engineering skills so that you after three and a half year can go out and get a job uh, because that is our main focus is we want to make you like give you the perfect straight line to the work market Danish work market international work market um, 
Yeah, we have study start on the 1st of September. Uh, today we are actually around 25 nationalities on campus. We do not yet have any Turkish students. We have Danish students who originate from Turkey, so that's a little bit there. Uh, we also have very small classes. We don't have these big uh, 200 people lectures. There is a minimum, a like maximum of 40 students per class, which means you will get a very close relationship and interaction with your teacher. So your teacher, for example, knows your name, which for big universities is very unnormal. But here we have a, we have a very close bond between teacher and student. And again, we also have this close cooperation with the local biotech industry. A lot of project-based, hand-on lab work. We are a lot of the time in the laboratory working. Uh, and then a six-month internship, often paid but not guaranteed. And then your teachers will be a mix of Danish and international teachers. All the textbook will, of course, be in English. So just if you are sitting out there and thinking, hmm, should I become an engineer? Then there's like these things you have to like put a mark with. So you think math is interesting, that's a good start. You're ready to learn how to program. And by that, I just mean right now, you just need to be able to uh, to turn on a computer, uh, but you need to be ready to learn a new language, as I call it. Um, you prepare that English is a part of your everyday life. So for all of us, English is our second language. So it's okay that we speak English in different ways. Um, you think higher of higher professionalism, you're a problem solver. And lastly, and most importantly, you're ready to invest many hours in your study because this is not just a seven to three job. This is a, a heavy workload you will experience, but it also gives the whole experience a better ballast. And, and yeah, I promise you, you will enjoy it. I promise. Uh, and then to go. A fun fact, the nice to know <laughs> with the salary. So you can see here on the screen that uh, in, at least in Denmark, uh, engineers are paid extremely much in salary um, compared to many other uh, newly educated. And you can either choose yourself to go directly to the job market, but you can also choose to take a master's degree. And that is what is amazing about the program at Absalon is that you have to the choice. You can either go for a master's degree or get a job. That is really awesome. You can also work for 10 years and then do a master's degree. You have a lot of variation here, and, and that is what I per, uh, personally like. Uh, together with this, we are very down to earth here in Calumbol, very down to earth. Uh, shortly, just about uh, study environment, uh, of course, in these corona periods, it's, it's a bit down, but we we focus a lot of, of you international need to learn the Danish tradition, you need to be a part of this awesome campus. So we have a lot of activities, Christmas dinner, show you the tradition in Denmark, want to know what dishes you cook from where you're from, etc, etc. So we have a lot of fun. Uh, so right now it doesn't matter for you, but we have a temporary campus. This summer we moved to a new campus and we also this year got a new dormitory that is so extremely cheap and awesome. I will just show it to you. The new campus will be placed just in the backyard of Novo Nordisk, again to make this cooperation between uh, industry and you as a student even closer. Um, this is the new campus, and just to show you, it will be ready. They are building, and actually this week they put up the walls. So uh, they are ready if you come this summer. Um, yeah. So the new student accommodation called Kalumbo Kollegiet. I put the address there. You can get uh, really cheap uh, rooms where you have your own bathroom and your own small kitchen. Um, and all most of our new students, they live up there and have a really great time with Friday bar and studying together. Yeah, it's really cool. Uh, so to the important part, the admission requirements. So uh, we have what is called, for example, Danish A-level. And A-level doesn't mean it's a specific grade. It's just a way we measure like how many years you spend on it. So I put the hours. So you can see if to get in, you need math on A level corresponding to 375 hours. You need physics corresponding to Danish B level, which is around 190 hours. Then you need chemistry on B level, the same amount of hour. And then you need English corresponding to Danish B level of 220 hours with a minimum grade of 3.0 on the Danish grading scale. And you also can document it with either an E 
I E L T S test with a minimum score of six and a half, or TOEFL test with a score of minimum eighty three points. And again, I put the admissions uh, mail at the bottom, and they can answer everything about your paper. I am not allowed to do that. Yes, and you need to apply before the fifteenth March on quota two on the blue link on uptails.dk. Um, yeah, and I just screenshot the page here so you can see it. Uh, lastly, you can contact our student ambassador. You can also find them on, on our webpage if you have a question regarding books. How is it to live in Denmark? How are the Danish people? We can be crazy. <laughs> and all these questions, the students are ready to greet you. If you want to visit Denmark to come see campus, we can also arrange that. Um, yeah, that is all I wanted to say. And of course, there is a tuition fee, and I can't remember that right now, but I will find it to you too when Ines is done talking about um, her education. So I will just um, go out of my presentation, and I hope you have asked a lot of good questions while I was talking. Um, and I will just open Ines' presentation. And you can, of course, see what I'm doing, and that is totally okay. <laughs> Ines, are you ready? Yes, I am. Uh, yeah. Cool. I had so a little just, problem before with the connection, but I hope uh, it doesn't happen. Okay. No, otherwise I will just talk to yeah. you. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Cool. Just tell me when to change the, the slide. Perfect. Okay, so my name is Ines, and I'm a student at... Absalon. So I study teaching. I study the international honors degree in teaching and um, summarizing it. It's a bachelor where you can become a teacher and you can teach around the world in international schools. So it allows you to travel as well. Yeah, you can switch. Yeah. And so um, if you're asking yourself whether this is a study for you, it's a study for you if you enjoy working with children, you enjoy working in an international environment as well, because that's a big part of it. You'll work in a place with people from many cultures. And also if you love to travel and explore the world, because with this um, education, when you're working, you'll get a chance to do this in the future. And then also if you want an inspiring and creative job, because with this job, not like no two days are exactly the same. And then um, if you study here, yeah, like right now at the moment, there's an increased number of international schools. Every time it's becoming more and more popular, it's not only expatriates that are studying at international schools, locals are also studying at international schools now. So the numbers are rising. Um, you also have quite an attractive job profile. It's not so common. There's a lot of teacher degrees around the world, but it's quite few that already specialize in the international area. So you'll be very attractive to international schools. And then you'll have yeah car career opportunities all over the world. And with this study, you'll get an intensive teaching experience. So throughout your study, I'll speak about it later, but you'll get the chance to train and experience it so that you feel prepared once you graduate. And you also get the chance to take an Erasmus studying abroad, but I'll also, yeah, speak about that. Yes. Um, to summarize it, our bachelor is four years long, so it's eight semesters. And you get an honors degree when you graduate because you get 270 credits, which is quite a bit of credits. And in the study, you'll be able to specialize in four teaching subjects and you'll get three teaching experiences. And then, yeah, with the Erasmus, you have the possibility for international exchange. And yeah, you're offered classes where you get a high level of personal attention because like in Kalimbaugh, the number of students isn't too many. So you get time to discuss things and speak to your lecturer if you need to speak about something. And they also use quite innovative, um, creative, problem-based learning um, classes. Yeah. And then here I have a picture with a bit of the structure of the four years. So you get an overview on it. And um, in the lighter color, I have all of the subjects that are mandatory for everyone. So it's subjects like general education, you study things like religion, culture, to be interculturally competent, ethics, basically to prepare you to, tra to work in an international environment. And then you have other mandatory subjects such as, yeah, pupils learning, um, general teaching competence, inclusive education, which is more 
focused on the psychology and pedagogy of teaching. And then you've also be prepared to teach bilingual students, learning about bilingual education and handle yeah, different curriculums. So they prepare you for the different curriculums that you can yeah encounter at different schools that you can work in. And then in red, I have the darker color. It's the um, teaching subject modules, which is that you get the chance to choose what subjects you would like to study and specialize in, in your studies. Yeah, in the next slide, I have the examples of some of the studies, classes you can take. So for example, English is mandatory for everybody as you're preparing to work in an international school. So you'll probably be teaching English. But then apart from this, you can choose another three um, subjects to specialize in between art, German, social geography, history, physical education, and health, religion, music, science, mathematics. So there's a lot of options. So it's really like diverse and it really fits anybody. You can choose the subjects that you want to specialize in. So yeah, you, you get to um, personalize it and it fits well, yeah. Um, and then regarding the teaching experiences, you can click three times because I think it, they get like pictures, yeah there so um you get to do three teaching experiences which are all between six to eight weeks long and um your first one is going to be at a local danish school teaching english and this may seem a bit um scary if you don't speak danish but it's really okay because in denmark most people speak english and you are going to be teaching english so yeah and you usually go to schools that are um associated to our university so they're used to having international students come and teach english at the schools and then in your second year you get to choose where in the world you would like to go to so you get to choose an international school for example i will be going to milan next month if i if coronavirus <laughs> makes that possible but we have students going to tanzania a lot of students also go to asia it just has not been possible this year, but normally we would also be going there. And then in your final year, you choose an international school within Denmark to go to for another six weeks. Yeah. And then um, in order to get the honors degree, not only the bachelor, but the extra credits, you have to do something abroad to make it yeah international. So this can be either taking an Erasmus a semester abroad, or it will be doing your um, teaching experience abroad. So you can also choose to stay in schools within Denmark and um, go abroad to study, or you can also do both things. You also have that opportunity. So with the semester abroad, um, you study like you take an Erasmus, and it'll be around five months, one semester. And um, if you do it within Europe, you receive a grant, so you're supported to do it. And we have a lot of partner universities. So you can um, contact the university and they'll tell you what options you have depending on what you would like to specialize in. I, for example, went to Sweden to specialize in mathematics and I had a great experience. And then the teaching experience abroad, you also, you also have the chance to um, receive an Erasmus grant, which is support if you stay within Europe so yeah it's quite it's very possible to do and it's a great opportunity to take yes and then here i have a list of some of the universities that we have partnerships with if you would like to go um yeah study a semester abroad and we have a lot of countries australia belgium norway yeah spain the list goes on there's there's a lot of yeah schools And then um, once you finish your studies here, you do have the option to get a job directly. And as I said, our job profile is very attractive. So there's a large market for us to go abroad. And yeah, and if not, you can also choose to study a master's degree, but yeah, or work. And a lot of our students have gone straight to even Brazil or yeah, we have some students who stayed in Sweden and are now in Singapore. So you have a lot of opportunities or you can also choose to stay here in Denmark or substitute. 
And yeah, you can have job titles such as a primary teacher, a lower secondary teacher, school principal, special educator, or yeah, go, go further and take a master's in educational psychology or educational research. And then a bit about um, the student life at our university. As Jacqueline said, it's a bit tricky now with coronavirus, but we do have, um, we have SMU, which is a social committee at our university, and they're really putting in a, an effort to try to keep the social life active, but also, yeah, beware with what's going on. So yeah, for example, we had some volleyball matches outdoors, and yeah, we respected social distancing, but usually we would have more social events planned with the university. They really put in a lot of effort. And then when you study at the university in Denmark, the model of university, it includes a lot of um, group work. So assignments or exams, you are able to do them in groups and they really um, encourage this because it resembles the working environment where you will have to work with others. So you gain a lot of yeah, social skills for your job as well. And so you'll have a lot of meetings in groups. So even the study itself is quite social in that sense. And then, yeah, usually we have, we also have a school band, theater, a food club, a book club, and a lot of sports that you can do to, yeah, get to know people and socialize. And then um, throughout the studies, apart from create like taking exams and assignments, you will be creating a portfolio, which is just a tool where you collect and reflect and connect things within the competence areas of your education. So it creates yeah a coherence within your education of what you have learned and it shows a development of yourself as a student. So this is something else that you're examined in and it's much more yeah creative and unique than just writing an exam. So we have more, yeah, creative assignments like this throughout our studies. And then um, it's quite similar to Jacqueline. When you apply to study here, we accept a lot of different diplomas. And um, yeah, the Danish one, Danish, French, European baccalaureate, international baccalaureate, but we also accept things that equate to the Danish secondary school certificate. So you can once again contact the um, admissions office at our university if you have any doubts and you want to ask them and inquire about it, but they do equate them. And so as long as you have a high school diploma, you'll probably be able to. You just have to contact and see if it's not in English for them to understand. Yeah. Um, I just want to, um, you are, you should not ever uh, translate your original um, mm -hmm. diploma. The, the diploma should be handed in uh, in the original language. Yeah. Uh, yeah. And then um, concerning admission requirements, it's quite similar where you need a, a, a level of English, a certificate that shows this. And then you need a grade seven in the Danish scale. So it says that it's equivalent to a grade C, but it might be different in your system. However, we have a lot of international students coming here with diplomas from different countries. So they do just they do carry out a interview for students who do not have a grade seven or who have a grade that's different if their diploma is and it's yeah, it's just like an interview. So quite a lot of people do do it before coming since we have a lot of international students who don't have a Danish grade, but it's it's nice. It's Then you get to also talk to lecturers and they get to see, yeah, why you're choosing to study here. Yeah. And then um, once you have been enrolled in our university, in order to be sure about the... Um, English level in order to complete the honors degree, you have a three hour admission test. But it's once you're here and it's a written English test. And what they look at is just your English and that you're able to structure a, an, a well-structured argument. Yeah. 
And then finally, I have here, yes, yeah, some websites in case you want to look us up on Facebook or anything. We have quite a lot up on our Facebook. So yeah, feel free to look at that. And if not, if you need more information, you can also email. I'll be happy to answer anything that you don't ask today. Yeah. And then, yeah, that's, yeah. that's all. Cool. I will just stop sharing. Mm -hmm. Cool. Uh, so while Ines was talking, I just looked up the tuition fee for the Bachelor of Engineering in Biotechnology and the uh, tuition fee for the non-EU citizens for the whole education is 40,350 euros. Okay. And that should be very cheap, I have heard. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know, but I've heard it's very it's cheap. For the so, whole degree. Whole, yeah. Yes, okay. exactly. Cool. So now I will go to the bottom of your questions and I will simply ask, uh, we will um, answer them one by one. I just want to um, inform you all that in the chat section, I have put a link for if you want to sign up for the programs at Absalon, so you get more information uh, about them. So um, yeah, please sign up. It could be so awesome and you will get uh, newsletters, etc. about the education you choose to be signed up for. So we have, uh, do you have molecular biology and genetics department? So the way Absalon is structured as a institution is not the same way as you know from a university. Uh, our program, the Bachelor of Engineering Biotechnology, is under a center, a center of engineering and science. Uh, so we don't have a specific center for molecular biology and genetics, but we have um, a course in molecular biology. Uh, yeah, that is all I can say. We don't have a, a department, uh, as you may know it, uh, but uh, you will learn molecular biology differently. And we both have molecular biology as um, a mandatory course, and we also have it as an elective course. So you can have um, it twice during your education. Uh, and of course, you will learn a little bit about genetics in that part, but genetics don't uh, take much of our program here in Kalambor. Um, how is career opportunities for international students after graduation? Uh, I can talk first here. It's uh, if you're an engineer, if it says engineer someplace, they want to hire you. Uh, for example, at Novo Nordisk, they already have a lot of international um, employees who do not speak Danish. Uh, at least here in Kalambo, we have Danish classes from first semester. And we really emphasize our international students to learn Danish because at some point in your career, if you want to stay in Denmark, um, the company will, will want you to speak Danish. <laughs> but it's not a, not a demand from, the, yeah from the first second, but uh, as a, I, I can tell you, for example, this year, um, all people who were internship at Novo Nordisk and Novo Science and a company called Unibio, all got job offers after the internship, even though there's a half year till they are done. So that is how much the companies want them. Um, Ines, do you want to also yeah. answer? As I said before, now it's before international schools, they were set up for students. For example, if you were living abroad and in Asia and you, your parents were working there, so you had the need to go to a school in English. But nowadays, it's something that even if you're living in your own country, your parents might want you to study in an international environment and study in English for career opportunities in the future. So the amount of schools is just increasing and e increasing exponentially every year. So they do have a need for teachers. And also it's not, it's quite a new thing for teaching to already be focused on international schools. So international schools will see your profile is quite attractive because you're already prepared to work in that kind of environment. They don't have to prepare you for, yeah, an intercultural environment. So it's also very, yeah, you have a lot of opportunities as well. Yeah, I agree. And yeah, within the field of biotech, as you may have heard with the whole uh, agenda of the world <laughs> climate crisis, uh, there is a uh, big demand of people who can solve the, the climate crisis. So uh, yeah, please go solve it. <laughs> 
Uh, do you have equivalents to every country? Uh, with, like everybody's accepted. If you're from Turkey, if you're from Spain, everybody's accepted. Uh, though if um, 10 people from Spain, for example, we have had a lot of Spains, Spanish people here, at least at Calumbo, we can say we only want five Spanish students, but um, that is not relevant by now. Uh, we, uh, yeah, everybody is, you are at the same level as the Danish people too, so there's a lot of Danish, Danish people who apply for the international biotech degree and you are, you come in with the same, uh, yeah, equivalents as Danish too, so it doesn't matter. And I guess it's the same for the, for the international honors degree. Yeah. 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 Do you, do you any program in full English taught? Um, the two programs we are presenting today is in full English taught. There is no one speaking Danish to you, I promise. You don't need to, uh, to have Danish in any level uh, when you start here. But as I said before, we really recommend you strongly to take Danish classes, um, especially if you have a dream to stay in, in Denmark uh, the rest of your life. And we really want you to stay. That is why we want you to come to Denmark, is also to stay in Denmark after you're done with your education. Um, so um, it's it's full English taught uh, degrees, but at least for I know also for where Ines is from, like you will yeah. you will you will talk with also Danish student, and you will be friend with Danish student, and Danish student will speak speak English to you. I promise. <laughs> um, we have English in uh, in school very early in Denmark, so um, even small children speak English. Um, if we cannot meet the language requirement, do we still have a chance to get accepted? And it is supposed to start uh, before our undergrad education. Um, you have to, you have to fulfill the requirements. I don't know if they do any like if you don't fill the requirements, you can still a little bit come in. But at least at our program, you need to fulfill the requirements to come in. But I know that you can buy the TOEFL test. I think. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah. you can just take it again. <laughs> yeah, I would do the same. They might ask you just for a certificate that you need, but both programs are fully taught in English. So the English requirement is quite essential. Yeah. 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 And I we have students who whose English um skills are undermined and I don't think I have the best in the world and they are still here so I, I think it's manageable to to get the the scores you need to get them um, before an undergrad education you need a high school diploma to get in yeah uh, is there partner tech companies that we can do internship after we graduated? After you graduated, you need to get a job. You don't need to go to an internship. <laughs> so, so you you will have to have your internship during your your program, and after that, you are off to to rule the world and to become an awesome engineer in, in the companies. Um, there, you will definitely need uh, you will get a job and not an internship. Internship is doing the education and then a job afterwards if that is what you're looking for. As I said before, what we normally see is that that the students they get a student job at the companies and then they start to get a network within that company. And therefore they also apply for an internship at that company and they of course do a very good job. So the company asked them to do their bachelor project at them. All students do the bachelor project in correlation with a, a, a company, and then it often also involves to a job afterwards. It's uh, it goes hand in hand, if you can say so. Uh, would you suggest any specific program or programs which are the most useful for internet who would like would like to do career in Denmark? Bachelor of Engineering in Biotechnology. <laughs> I, sorry, and honors <laughs> degree in teaching. Of course, yeah, <laughs> of course. Mm -hmm. um, no, not to be kidding you, and not to make fun uh, of you. Of course, you have to come to Denmark. The demand for engineers in Colombo that want to stay in Colombo and be within the same company for many years are so you are so desperately needed what we see right now uh, Jacqueline I think there is a technical issue in China connection okay. yeah mm -hmm. 
If not, that's okay. If not, I can carry on and answer one of the ones for my program until she returns to continue it. Mm. Okay. She's back now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, welcome to Calombo. Uh, no, I'm kidding. <laughs> uh, what did what was I talking about? Uh, mm. uh, do, 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 do specific programs. Ah, yeah. Uh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Many of them are graduated in Copenhagen. They live there, and then they get a job in Kalundborg, and then they travel from Copenhagen to Kalundborg. And in Denmark, traveling an hour is a long time. So they often stay within the companies for two years, and then they they get a job where they live. And the companies just want to keep their employees. So if you are yeah, you're almost sure to get a job. And because it's private companies we talk about, it's not municipality or the state who owns the, the, the companies, but it's private. There's also a lot better uh, circumstances with your job. For example, at Novo Nordisk, if you have worked there for three years, you get one year paid um, a maternity leave. Uh, that is insane. Uh, you have very good holiday money etc etc so there's a lot of good things with working in private uh, companies compared to yeah for example state or municipality so um, yeah uh do also do we have a chance to get work permit to do internship in denmark when you apply for the program you of course also have to apply for a residence permit in denmark because you're an eu state st student non-EU student, yes, that is what I wanted to say. And when you get a resident permit for studying in Denmark, within that is also you're allowed to have a student job and an internship. So that in, in the second you, you get your uh, residence permit for, for being here for studying, the other things also follow. You can get a, a job and an internship. Again, if you, when you, I think when you are done with your education, you need to apply for the residence permit again, as I as I remember. But don't take my word on that. Uh, yes, yes. Then is it possible to join the Erasmus program, engineering programs as well? Uh, yes, it is. You can also take a um, year abroad at the Bachelor of Engineering program. Uh, we have a very very close cooperation with a um, France uh, university. Uh, IBC or something, IBA, I think it's called. And last year we had two um, students from that university and this year we have one who is here for one semester. So yes, that is also possible to go abroad if you want to do that uh, with the, also the schools we work with. So yes, that is possible. Um, Yes, it's for you, Ines. When we receive the international honors degree in teaching, will we be able to work as a primary school teacher also in different countries than Turkey? Yes. So when you study here, what you get is that you get a national certificate, national teaching certificate from Denmark. So you're qualified as a teacher in Denmark. And apart from that, you also get a bachelor in education. So when you're teaching, what you need is a certificate and a bachelor of education, and then you can teach abroad so yeah international schools in turkey for certain you would be able to work in and then if you also speak turkish for example then you might want to work in a turkish school there teaching english so yeah you can use your teaching certificate all around the world yes so the next a uh, question is very specific can veterinarians graduates also work in the field of biotechnology I don't know, maybe. Um, try to apply for a job and see what happens. Um, as a, for example, some of the companies, they still do animal testing. Um, and I would guess that, for example, there it could be perfect suited. Um, Actually, today we use yeast to to uh, to produce insulin, but before we use pig pancreas, um, we don't do that anymore. <laughs> so no worries. Um, but I I will I, I cannot answer you directly. Um, but as a, if you are 
already educated, I would just apply for all sorts of jobs. Um, yeah, other, all take another education. We, as a, we have students who go for the range of 17 to 50. Like that is the range of students. So there's also students here who already have an education from where they're from, but they just wanted to, to take a good one to, um, to try something. Um, I hope that was an okay answer to your question. Um, do we need to speak Danish in every level for international teaching program? The program is completely taught in English, so you do not need to speak Danish to um, be able to study the program. But as Jacqueline said, it's very useful when you live in Denmark and you surely will learn a bit of Danish during the four years that you're here, but it's not necessary. Mm -hmm. No. Um, cool. The next question. We need to take a conditional acceptance letter if we do not have Danish language level, right? You don't need Danish language level. You need um, different courses on a Danish something level. Um, for example, with the biotech program, you need math on Danish A level. Uh, but that have, has nothing to do with you needing any Danish skills. Uh, there is no um, uh, admission requirement on Danish at all. There is for English, you need to have specific English grade. For the international honors degree, it was 7.0 on the Danish scale. And for our program, it's 3.0 from the Danish scales. And for our program, you also need Danish and chemistry and physics on Danish different levels. But no, no, you don't need to speak Danish before you come. Um, no worries. Uh, you do offer professional courses of Danish, if I'm not wrong, that is correct. We have a, a professional uh, Danish uh, school, lang language school connected with our school. So it's not just for fun, you get a real exam with a real paper that you uh, have uh, learned Danish. Um, yes, do international students uh, having any visa problem with conditional acceptance? Uh, we have not experienced that yet. We have uh, students from Mexico. Um, we have students from India, China, uh, US, and so far we have not had any problem with the with the acceptance of any visa. I don't know with you, Ines, if you know. I the same thing. Yeah, we have a lot of students from abroad who've also applied for the visa and there's been no issues. You just have to find out the dates in your country, like the deadlines to apply in order to be able to have it once you're meant to start studying here. Yeah. Exactly. Um, that was actually our our last questions. Um, I just want to hear if anyone is having any uh, last questions. Uh, uh, hey, I just want to, if this way is only for bachelor degree students, that is correct. Mm -hmm. For you who had to put that in the chat. Um, yes. So, just also now Ines mentioned Facebook and Instagram. You can also follow our uh, our degree on Facebook and Instagram. And I will just put some uh, links in the chat mm -hmm. box for you to uh, you can click on before we end this. There it is. Uh, so I just put the sign up link again for you who didn't press it before so please sign up if you find it interesting then I put the brochure uh, the folder where you can read about our program then our Facebook page and our Instagram page which is really fun uh, and then the the general web page mm -hmm. um, uh, Jacqueline I think there is one more question in the questions tab. yes uh, thank you for answering my question about internship that's good actually doing it during our education yes it is <laughs> but I should ask is the internship compensated to graduate if yes how long of its duration yes you have to do the internship and it's on the sixth semester and um, yeah that's just how it is um, it's uh, one semester so yeah half a year it's more maybe more fun five months than half a year uh, yeah wasn't that the answer to the question Venus? yes yeah 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 and yeah, you it's part of the credits. I yeah, think. yeah, it's part. Yeah, we, we we measure our education in what we call ECTS points, mm -hmm. uh, and the internship is uh, it have a certain amount of ECTS points that you need 
to uh, receive your your diploma in the end. And you cannot uh, do your bachelor project before have finished your internship. That is just how it works. Mm -hmm. uh, yes, uh, but as as you say, it's it's like. The, the when you get hands on experience, you just become like a million times more worth in the eyes of the companies because you have worked with it in reality. You have not only just read it in a book. And that is what we, we, we really appreciate in Denmark. It's like we just need lab work, hands on, um, project based because this is how we work in the companies. In the companies, you cannot just sit on your own desktop, work with yourself. You need to go out and talk with the, your your different colleagues, and you need together to find a way to go through this problem. So, so that is very important for us that you you do that here. Um, yeah, thank you so much out there for all your uh, questions. Uh, I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you you got some new information. Maybe thought, hey, Denmark is maybe the place to go. Um, you are at least very welcome to join us. Uh, I would love to see you here. Uh, we would love to have some students from Turkey that could be new to our list. Um, yeah, so. Uh, I will, for the very last thing, just write my email in the chat box. Maybe you should do that too, I guess, uh, yeah. you, that you can copy out there. And you are always welcome to write me uh, if you have any questions regarding books, um, how much things is costing in Denmark, et cetera, et cetera. I will gladly help you. Um, same yes. for me yeah yeah <laughs> so uh yeah we just put our different uh, emails in the chat box so uh, copy them if you want them or if you're not don't copy them and hope to see you around in denmark and uh, become some awesome teachers or some awesome engineers that is what we need right now in the world so yeah, uh, yeah. thank you so much out there and uh, have a nice evening to you yeah. <laughs> Thank you very much uh, for attending in our session. So it was very nice to uh, welcome you at the IFT Talks webinars. And thank you for the great presentation and very detailed information. You, uh, we, we received many questions and uh, we replied all of them uh, as I follow. Thank you again for joining us. You're welcome. Thank you. Thanks to you. Have a good evening. Bye-bye. You too. Bye.